Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's vlog, we'll be making large batch of puff puff. In a bowl, I have my flour already measured out. Next, I'm going with my caster sugar. Check description for measurements. After the sugar, next is my yeast. When I'm done adding the yeast, I go ahead and add my salt. I add salt by the side because yeast do not like salt. They don't go well together. Afterwards, I go ahead and add my milk flavor. Yes, this is powdered milk flavor. I am not using the actual milk that I used to make your tea. I'm using powdered milk flavor. Next is my water. For this recipe, I am using one liter of water or four cups of water. Please, there is this particular trick I use when adding water. When I'm adding water to any of my recipe, I make sure I add it in batches. I do not pour the entire required water into the ingredients. I ensure I add in batches so that if I achieve the right consistency or the consistency that I'm okay with, I can stop and to prevent having very fluid or flowing butter then i begin to mix it in i begin to bring them together gradually do this gradually until you get every part of it while adding your water and also watching the dough to see if you've gotten the consistency that you desire a quick reminder if you are new here please subscribe also hit the notification bell to get notified each time i post a new video if you're a returning subscriber Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your time. Kindly give me a thumbs up. Drop your comments below. If you have any questions that need to be clarified, kindly ask me in the comment section. When I have properly mixed the water with the dough, here comes the work when you are dealing with puff puff. You begin to beat this batter. The essence of beating it is to allow the gluten in the flour to form to help the yeast trap air and make it rise properly. So you beat it for about 3 to 5 minutes depending on the amount of batter that you have. You can see at the end of the day, I didn't finish using the water. It remained very little. And I was okay with the consistency of my butter. Beating this will also help it to rise very quickly if the temperature is appropriate. What I did here is that I tried sharing the butter because the quantity in that particular bowl was so much. And if I cover it and allow it to rise, it wouldn't accommodate or give enough room for it to rise properly. It's definitely going to overflow.
I had made sure I scraped down the sides, but next I'm going to use my cling film to make the first layer of covering. Please note that if you don't have this cling film that looks quite fancy, you can use your black nylon, provided the nylon is clean. Just use your black nylon to cover it to make it trap heat. Then you can take an extra step by using a towel, a kitchen towel to cover it. There are two processes to making this rise quickly or adjusting the temperature in your kitchen so it can rise properly. One, you can decide to put a bowl of not so hot water beneath the bowl of your puff pot butter. The heat will actually make it to rise as quickly as possible. Secondly, you can preheat your oven. When you preheat your oven for 10 minutes, switch it off. Then pop in the puff puff butter bowl into the oven. Remember, you have to switch off the oven before you put it in there. Another method is that you can decide to start boiling water in your kitchen and place the puff puff butter bowl not quite far from the... Or you can place the puff puff butter bowl around or close to the water that is boiling. This is it. After I have allowed it to rise, you can see the way it's jiggling. It rose very well and it rose appropriately. Another tip I have for you is that before you start to fry, it's important that you deflate it so it can help you mold very well. You deflate as you're heating up your oil. Use your hand to beat it once more and then begin to scoop. There are several ways to scoop your puff puff butter. The most important thing is that do the one that allows you to get the shape properly. Me, I don't use that um, round molding method. I just feel this whole butter sticks to my hand. So I use the tip of my fingers to scoop it and my puff puff still comes out fine. You can also use your rubber spoon dipped in water so that it can easily slip off. Another method is that you can use your butter dispenser for this. Or you can also improvise with an open um, soft drink can or bottled water can. Open it at the bottom, pour in your butter. Use this to drop your butter while using your scissors to slice it off into the oil. Another tip you need to know about puff puff before frying is that the oil needs to be hot at least to a certain temperature. You just perform the heat test. Don't allow it to overheat such that it will start burning but at least let it be hot so that once it drops it will just float on top of the oil and will start boiling to start frying. Sorry to say. Whenever you are scooping puff puff into oil for frying, kindly get your water, maybe a cup of water and pour it in a bowl. If you watch here, you see that I'm struggling a bit to drop the puff puff off my hands. And if you watch my shadows, you see me going back and forth, trying to dip my water that is in the sink, then come back to my bathroom, scoop and drop. So get your water close by such that as you scoop, you dip your hand in water so that the butter can easily get off your hands when you are scooping. Another thing is that you should try to space them a little bit as much as you can so that when they don't join together then stick to the pan, descend and stick to the pan. When two join together, two or three join together, it becomes too heavy such that they now descend to the bottom of the pan, stick and they may start burning. If you watch me here scooping the second batch, you'll notice that the butter can easily drop down my hands. My water is now close by. I just dip my hands, my butter, 
and guys you can see that particular one that has something like like a dent or a sponge it actually hits the bottom of the pan that's why it's like that imagine if the pan was crowded and you left it there for like extra two three minutes it's going to burn on one side so if you can combine scooping at the same time stirring it the professionals do it that way it will also give you an amazing outcome At the end of the day, this is what we had. I had so much puff ball. The target was to achieve 100 puff balls. And yes, we did it. 100 puff balls. And it tasted really great. You can recreate this recipe and I bet you, you're going to love it.